I'm Bryce Rosenblum, the Artistic Director at World Music Institute, and it's a pleasure for me to introduce um, our, uh, our webinar panelists today. Uh, uh, Jonathan Gott is the co-founder, uh, guitarist of the band Monotonics, which, uh, which was hailed by Spin as the most exciting live band in rock and roll. With fame in the US, God traveled to the New York when he found himself unable to perform in his home country by refusing to take part in its mandatory military service as a conscientious objector. In 2022, he found the label Stone Tapes, amplifying different spectrums of 21st century folk music. God is proud that Stone Tapes also acts as an artist studio and musicians collective focused on post-genre collaborations across traditions. Um, Jonathan Schaefer is the host and producer of WNYC's long-running new music okay. show, New Sounds, founded in 1982, and its Innovative Soundcheck podcast, which has featured live performances and interviews with a variety of guests since 2002. He created the New Sounds live concert series in 1986, which features new works, commission pieces, and a special series devoted to live music for silent film. John Schaefer will host the two-night New York Guitar Festival that World Music Institute is presenting at Calvin Music Center on June 14th and June 15th. I'm pleased to hand the mic over to Jonathan Gott and Jonathan Schaefer, who will also be joined by musicians Daryl Black Eagle Jameson of the Medicine Singers and Malam Ben Jafar, who will both perform at the New York Guitar Festival on Saturday, June 15th. Thank you all and enjoy the session. Thank you, Bryce. Well, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, Jonathan, I invited you to be with me on this webinar. You thought it would be a good idea, and I certainly agree, to have Malem and Daryl joining us as well. Let me start by asking how you and the medicine singers first came together. What was it that, what was the cause of your mutual attraction? Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. And yeah, it's great to have um, Alam and Daryl, my friends, just kind of like chatting and, you know, we, we all do it together. It's just, it's just a part of like the idea of our collaboration. It's kind of like a hang, you know, and that's the way that I met Daryl. And that's the way that Alam and I met too. Um, just kind of like playing music as musicians, you know, and just like saying, hey, let's jump on stage together, you know. With Hassan, I've seen uh, Hassan play so many times, you know, and we just started talking because I was in those shows and, you know, and then In of Gnawa, Hassan's band, opened for our like album release show in 2015 and they played with us for the first time. It's almost 10 years ago. And uh, we've been kind of like just doing fun stuff. And then when we had the opportunity to start Stone Tapes, like a small kind of record label, then the first idea was, well, let's bring all those friends together and just make make recordings and kind of start working on music more in a more kind of serious way than just occasional collaborations. With Medicine Singers, it was very special too. We we played South by Southwest and I saw a powwow band playing outside. I've actually, I'm not from the US. I've never heard powwow music before. And I just thought that they were so incredible. And watching them, I saw seven men play on a big drum and kind of sing in unison. And I thought, wow, that could really fit with what we do. So I just kind of asked them if they wanted to play. And they're all kind of like, no, nah, I don't think so. You know, <laughs> he, cl he claims that he didn't want to cramp our style, but I think that he was like, ah, those guys are not serious. So, but, 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 but I told him, you know, I wasn't like offended because I know that people from different cultures, you know, it's not always easy to collaborate, you know? So I just told him like, if you change, if you hear your music and change your mind, you're welcome to come and jump on stage anytime. We play on the floor too which is um, at least at that time, like often we would just set up in the middle and have the audience around us. And that's exactly the way that medicine singers do it. Eastern medicine singers and power music, it's kind of, you know, in the round and stuff. So it just fit really well. And when they heard the music, they just jumped in and it was one of the most incredible shows we've ever played. I kind of remember lifting my head and seeing that every single person in the audience is crying. And that's from, you know, just musicians collaborating for the first time. It wasn't even the deep collaboration that we have now when we know each other so well. So I just think it's such a powerful project and it already opened so many doors and we're excited to keep doing it. 
Well, you know, it strikes me that there might be something more at work here than just, you know, musicians jumping on and off stage with each other. You know, you, when you think of Native American powwow music and you think of Ganawa music from Morocco, you know, these are traditions and Daryl, correct me if I'm wrong. These are traditions that are deeply rooted in a culture and a kind of spirituality, even if it's not quote unquote religious music, there's something, you know, kind of happening above and beyond. Um, and, you know, it, it just seems, Jonathan, that as a rock guitarist, you know, we talk about the psychedelic end of rock music, trance, you know, that you're using a lot of when you start talking about trance, you're, you're getting into the same terminology and the same headspace as these other older traditions. You're nailing it right on the head. I think that's exactly, Daryl and I talk about it often and it's Hassan and I, we don't even have to talk about it. It's so obvious. This kind of like state of trance of kind of like losing yourself in a way and maybe kind of like opening up another part in your consciousness, a less aware one or something like that. And music is one of the most effective ways that I found. That's kind of what got me into music. And that exists in rock and roll, that exists in jazz, that exists, in, and it kind of comes in a way from powwow music. There's this great movie, Rumble, that shows us how Native American music, for example, influenced all those styles like rock and roll and jazz and all those American styles. And yeah, in forms of music that we call traditional, you know, the, the, that trance element is just as strong as it is in rock and roll psychedelic music it's just like the foundation of the music so and that's where we all meet we all kind of uh, lose each other lose ourselves together you know um daryl powwow singing i mean there are solo powwow singers there are contemporary native american musicians who do it as soloists but it seems like its roots are in what jonathan was just saying it's a kind of communal thing uh it's not about the individual it's about the the collective sort of raising their voices together is that right yeah i mean that that's basically how it goes i mean you know, there's so many different facets to it like when you're on that big drum um you have to be precise everybody has to be in unison at the same time you, most people don't see it but we're giving hand signals for like people to come in with leads and like we have pickups where we'll do a four beat pickup and then go to the next level of uh, drumming, which is a, a much uh, faster beat. Um, it's actually more complex than it looks. And um, I think that like when we're all together on it and we're all playing, I always told the guys, you know, that when you know that you've got it into that realm where it's like lifting people's heads is where you can close your eyes and play and just hear that thump, thump, thump of the drum. And I think that what that does is it, it raises people's, you know, ability to see, you know, how that medicine actually transcends and works into you. Um, and, and being on the drum is a whole nother experience, you know, because that, that beating goes through your arm, you can feel it. It's like, it's almost like a power. It's not like anything else. It's not like drumming you know, on a regular like rock and roll drum. And it's like, you know, you're warriors and you're there to play, you know, for the people, if you're doing a powwow for the different dances and things like that, um, specific dances. And we're, you know, we're traditionally an Eastern drum. So it's very different from like the Lakotas and the Western the Northern drummers. And then the Southern drummers have a different style than us. So um, it's, it is different. And here in the East, uh, it's, uh, I, I feel that it's it's as spiritual as anybody else thinks that the other two cultures are here in this country. So um, it is very very spiritual when you're doing it. If you if you're doing a song by yourself, like earlier when I did I did my sound check, you know those are called medicine songs, and mm -hmm. those songs, a solo artist is is on a hand drum, and those songs are made to like make you you know ease ease of mind ease of relax forget you know your problems and everything and just kind of get caught up in you know some of those songs are almost a story you know and it like brings you to a level of awareness that it actually takes away all the nervousness and everything in your body and that's 
kind of how um but, you know, I respond to that because it is, it's a very, playing that drum is very, very powerful. Well, uh, you've described it so well. I'm, I, I'm tempted to ask, in fact, I'm going to ask that if, if you could do one for us now. To, I mean, to sure. can you give us a medicine song? Sure. I, I know you have the, uh, the Black Eagle drum there. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> So this is a hand drum. Um, this is what a solo artist would use when he's doing those medicine songs. I'm going to do a song for you that nobody's heard yet. This is a um, medicine song that I wrote for my cousin who was a Vietnam vet, uh, Green Beret. He passed away during COVID. And this is a, a blessing song. Yeah, Way oh hey, yeah, oh no, she way oh hey, I hey oh, as come, quam poo Beautiful. Thank you. Daryl, um, you, you mentioned some of the other powwow traditions. I've spoken to a couple of Lakota powwow singers, and very often what they're singing are just syllables. They don't have a semantic meaning. But it sounded like you were using words in at least part of that song. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm using but part of the uh, Eastern Medicine Singers was Language Preservation Project. Right. Uh, if you if you look at the uh, song Daybreak, which I think was the first video to come out, you notice that Jonathan and I put the uh, language in it, okay, so that people can actually see it and l learn it as well, learn those songs uh, as a preservation for language for the people, the um, the Poconoke Nation, Wampanoag people. Um, there's not many speakers of the language anymore, so my thing was is was to save and preserve the language of our people so the songs that you hear from me a lot of them are language you know they're older styled uh the way that uh you would have heard probably at the point of contact here in the 15 and 1600s and i mean the lakota have songs like that too don't get me wrong because yeah I, yep I, I, they have a lot of the their old style uh cow bullhead in fact if you've ever heard of them he does a beautiful song called Hena Wachi Pei, and it's like one of my favorite Lakota songs. It's old style, and it's beautiful. It's the same type of singing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, did you grow up speaking Eastern Algonquin? No, no. Um, I was a, an adult man when I I met up with a elder who gave me the, the language and taught me, and uh, by no means am I a fluent speaker. It's a very hard language. But I promised him when he passed that I would continue it. And what better way than to do it with the repetition of music? And it would be preserved because it would be up on the airwaves at powwows and things. And, 
you know, uh, my friend Clinton Wixon, uh, Chief Nakia Hammock, he spoke fluent, and uh, also Donald Three Bears Fisher, who Yonatan had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, he was our our secondary secondary teacher after Clint, and uh, you know it was an honor to do it like this, so that we could preserve it. You know, there's so much culture bound up in in music, but there's an even deeper connection between a culture and its language. And when the language is lost, something even if you have recordings of the music, something essential has has gone away. Exactly. You you need to you know you need to preserve it. You need to keep speaking it. You need to keep playing it. Um, you need to integrate it in your culture. I mean, there are certain uh, songs uh, that we do that are Eastern songs, uh, for instance, and you'll you probably will see it sometimes at some of our performances. It's called the Calumet Dance, and um, each of the songs it has a purpose. You know, each song represents a certain particular social dance you might have a woman's eastern blanket which is probably one of the most graceful eastern dances ever it mimics the butterfly it's like almost like a mating a dance for um couples you know couples when they when they're looking for the man when they finish the dance they place the blanket at his feet and you know you play a certain song for that you play a certain song for your eastern war you know your eastern war dance has a particular song a very fast song uh, there's Eastern grass dances that we play on the side of the drums. And then like you heard that medicine song, that's there to soothe and to take people's problems away. So it's rooted deep, deep in the culture. Yeah. Uh, and you really have to be, you know, when you're traveling around, like, uh, you know, doing the powwows and meeting different people and making people happy, going to, you know, we do funerals for people and, and different things, sometimes weddings it's really a big responsibility to be a drum. Well, and, and it is voice, voices and drums. There doesn't seem to be a tradition of string instruments, and yet you guys really seem to like guitarists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. I mean, you know, look at like Rihanna Giddens, um, who she plays, you know, she's a traditional native as well from down south and she has the, the mountain style and they play a instrument that is based in native country you know and not only does she play but she plays it very well and you can hear the rhythms you know you yeah. can hear that drumming rhythm in her music and the, the same thing with the singing a beautiful you know um native sister's voice that you know that'll complement the drum you know, or singing alone solo and things. So it's like, it, it, it you, you have to be ingrained into it and, and listen to it. You know, it's, it's amazing, really, you know, yeah. and it is rooted in other music. Like, I mean, I can come out and sing blues too. I mean, it's like, you know, a lot of it is very similar, you know, uh, and I think probably with, Yon you know, Yonatan, the way that he plays and, I think the you know one of my favorite songs that he did was Rumble because the sound of Rumble you know first of all a Native American wrote it and choreographed it and played it but I think just the sound of it is like it's almost like electric powwow you know it's got that powerful warriors dance in it and um, you know it's just magnificent to put the the two of them together the drum and the power of the drum and everything and. You know, Yonatan's a great, he's a great guitarist. And I think when I first met him, you know, um, when we played together, he had never heard our music before. And we walked out, we did this song, the Hawk song, and uh, he mimicked the exact sound of the song with his guitar. And I looked like, oh, the guy's pretty good, man. I think, uh, <laughs> I think I can vibe with this guy, you know? <laughs> it's not, we did <laughs> yeah yeah we sure did and i mean it wasn't it's not our first time playing with different musicians i mean it's been a history for me um you know i have some celtic blood in me too and i play a lot with um you know bagpipers and warrior drummers and um you know i've been up on the stage with my hand drum with um you know celtic drummers at um the celtic festivals and things and you know we've played with um you know, violinists, you know, the fiddlers 
Irish fiddlers that play at these different uh, things around here in Rhode Island. So, you know, well, pretty crazy. You know, we played with a group, uh, Kudu, who do, they do like a Viking style music with the big drums. And uh, Jonathan had the pleasure of meeting, you know, uh, my friend David Masika, who was the uh, leader of uh, Kudu. So it's like we're all kind of crazy cool together, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned Rhiannon Giddens, you know, she has Irish, has Celtic blood as well. And, you know, has found a way to weave all these different traditions together. And it's just, you know, that kind of open-eared approach is something you all seem to share. Um, so, Malem, let me ask you something about, Daryl talked about medicine songs. Ganawa music is also meant as a kind of healing ceremony, isn't it? It's not just music that's fun to listen to. It's supposed to do something for you, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's healing music. It's uh, spirit music and Sophie music. It's no same rhythm. And Gnawa, every rhythm and song different. And Sophie different and to single, to play for God, for kids, uh, for children, for a lot of people to dead. Sophie music. And uh, healing music is people you find, you happy, you, you peace, love, and rhythm, and the Gnawa culture. And spirit music, and spirit music is uh, something incense uh, and uh, to kill sheep, to make food for band, uh, to make some uh, smoothie, to make uh, some uh, fried fish, a lot of something for and spirit music, food. So it it it's it's nourishment. It's yes. it's food for the the heart, the soul. Yes, yes. for band to mm -hmm. people to play lila, spirit music. Right. No, no same and show and festival and something like that. His lila is to make and the house to people no have alcohol, no have people to come to drink nothing you drink some coffee you drink some tea water listen to music mm -hmm. that's it and, and music to listen a lot of years is my father is malam is from fez the original i have school i have zawiya same school to people to come to listen to learn and music and dance and language and Zlara story for Gnawa Zawiya school. Gnawa Zawiya is school Gnawa. Right. Um, and Malam, you have to earn the title of Malam, right? You have, did, did you build that Sintir? Is that part of what you have to do to become a Malam? Uh, no ready to to come to my limb. It's a lot of work. You touch me, my father, a little bit. I'm going to hang out to listen and song and rhythm everywhere. First time to go to hang out in Morocco, Tanger. Next time, go to hang out in Casablanca and my Sam. Next uh, time you go to hang out in Marrakesh to listen and song and rhythm and south and north Gnawa. There's no half south Gnawa. I need to listen south and north Gnawa and Shamel, Tanger and Marrakesh and no different sound. It's different. And Marrakesh and Fez same rhythm 
Mm. And Casablanca and Rabat, same rhythm. His uh, Kutcher and Gnawa to come to to play Lila is everybody you play is big uh, Lila for Malam to to give you same uh, 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 to give you present for you ready everybody to hear you Malam you sing you play Gimbri you say you play Koyo you play an Karkaba to dance. right the castanets yeah. And the malam, a malam to give me and sign a list. Yes, is malam. Ah, okay. So a long process of learning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm come to New York. I have first time is my friend Randy Weston. I'm to hang out with him in Morocco, and Tonger, and Fez. First time to come to New York. To see him is my friend. He come with me. Told me I will come to to hang out to shoot tonight. Who he play? He told me is is just music. Randy. Oh yes, Randy is my friend. Okay, he's come with me. <laughs> I come tickets for me. Go. Is uh, Mr. Randy? You play show. You see me. You think who is Malam and Fest? No, maybe no. Is he? He's finished show. Is Randy is come to hug me. Oh man, you're welcome in New York City to hang uh, out with Randy Weston a lot of years in New York City. Uh, well, I, I, I also had the pleasure of hanging out with Randy Weston yes, many, many of times. Of and yes. he was such a huge, he was a fan of Ganawa music, but he yes. understood it and he knew what it meant and it made him feel something. Yes. What do you... What do you feel? Daryl was talking about when you play that drum, you feel something. What do you feel when you play the sintir? Uh, you first to play a drum uh, to make a band, to jump, to dance, to sing it, to everything is uh, a show and dance together. And last one, finish. And to play Gambri, small music and clap, something like that. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes and finish, and to play Karkabat and Gambri too. Okay. And Gambri is coming. His son is Moses' son. You Randy, you love it. Every party, every happy birthday, to call me, Madeline, please come to house to play song Moses. I love Moses. <laughs> God bless for him. He's dead. Yeah. Yep. And to hang out and Mr. Jonathan too is come to hang out with me to see young Lila, to hear you Gambri, to hear you sing, to see and community you know what happened. And to jam with me, his, his friend with me, is come to hang out and how to go to see kids and family and children. It's peace, love and music to do what you do, no problem, no mushki, no nothing. People is coming to hang out, you show, you start and show, yes, you start and show, no stop. His, uh, his music is, uh, is a lot of healing and medicine for people. Everybody to listen to music, his music 
his medicine. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan, uh, what, what what was your first experience of Ganawa music? I know there's a large Moroccan population in Israel, but um, that that wouldn't have been, I, I'm guessing, where you first heard this music. No, you know, this uh, this interview, and by the way, like, um, I really love listening to you and Daryl and Hassan talk. I feel like you're just asking, like, uh, perfect questions, and I'm kind of learning a lot myself, too. But with Gnawa music, it definitely shares similarities for some music of uh, the region that I grew up, you know. I think, like, in general, like, in my playing, sometimes, you know, the music just kind of naturally drifts to uh, sound a little bit like music from the Middle East and where yeah. I come from but okay. uh, but I also feel like it's kind of like a mix too so uh, Gnawa kind of feel, it's, it feels a little bit uh, natural for me to play I think there's a lot of Jewish roots in Gnawa music Hassan often brings uh, Jewish Gnawa songs and we play them oh, yes. Yes. and uh, but yeah like yeah. that's kind of like I'm realizing in this conversation that you know Ma'alem and Daryl are my teachers, you know, like most of the Gnawa I learned is, I mean, I listen to, now I know a lot of the recordings, the great recordings by Mahmoud Ghania, if, if yes. I'm saying it correctly. Yes. I think there's a beautiful Bill Laswell record that they did with Pharaoh Sanders playing saxophone. We always listen to that in the, in the studio and stuff. Yes. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of the recordings now, a lot from like Hassan and Ian of Gnawa and their scene and of like Moroccan expats in New York kind of showing me music. But definitely, like, my main teacher for, for the Gnawa style has been Hassan. And definitely my main teacher for, like, anything that has to do with powwow is Daryl. Like, that's the, that's just, like, the beauty of living in a place like New York and being able to have those friendships and, and those hangs, you know. Like, like Hassan was saying, you know, you meet up, the family's there, you have a drink, you play music. It's just kind of, yeah. like, exactly. people, like, people ask us a lot about our collaborations because... Maybe Malem, Daryl, and I, and other musicians in our like little, you know, uh, gang come from <laughs> different parts of the world, and but it just comes from a hang and just being friends, because like that—that's what music is always about. That's something that I yes. I really see when I go to see Inov Gnawa play, or when I play with them, or when I play with Daryl and Medicine Singers. I notice like I go to practices for. And, and kind of jam with Daryl and, 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 and those cats. And I kind of noticed that like everybody sitting around the power drum, it's a little bit more informal and natural than sometimes like our kind of like rock and roll, like hangs or whatever. Cause uh, yeah. like people just kind of show up to hang and there's music, you know, and the kids are kind of like running around with Ino Gnawa the first time we played together, they got to the dressing room and they just started playing music as soon as they arrived and there's music playing. Then the, there was four bands, they were playing third. And then, like, the first band starts, so they go watch the first band. First band is done, back to the dressing room, play music, second. That, and then by the time the, the third band, which was them, they just walk down. It was, like, in Rough Trade, where they had a venue, you know, in Brooklyn. Yeah. And they just walk down, play music, go to the stage. And then it's, like, so natural for them to just join us and things like that. That sense of community, that sense of music being, like, a natural part of life. I feel in our kind of, like, very capitalist, hyper-capitalist kind of, like, written world of you know where rock and roll music happens and stuff like that oftentimes there's that those kind of demarcations like stage there musicians there audience there this yeah. is a time for music this is a time for a break and a part of you know a big uh, plethora of things that i'm learning with working with masters like malam and daryl is yeah. how to bring music and that's kind of like what we've been doing with monotonics too and with a lot of my projects kind of playing on the floor and kind of just like challenging the the, the way that music is presented from us, it comes from like this kind of like angry place of punk that we just want to like change ch change things. But with the when I, with medicine singers with Hassan, it also comes from a, just like a very natural place where like there's just much less separation of music and community. It's just all kind of like the same thing: music, family, hang. Those things are just like so interrelated that you don't even know what you're doing most of the time. Whether you know. Yeah, well, you know. Um... We're all talking because we're all gathering on June 15th at Merkin Hall at the Kaufman Music Center for one of uh, two concerts that we're doing for the 25th anniversary of the New York Guitar Festival, which uh, David Spellman and I co-founded in 1999, obviously. And usually we know what's going to happen <laughs> <laughs> each night. You know, we have a lineup. We know who's going to play and who's going to play second and then who's going to go third. And I have been 
absolutely unable to get you to to so as best as i can put it uh mamadi koyate the guinean guitarist yeah. is going to play duets with laraji the great veteran new age zither player then lee ronaldo of sonic youth is going to play duets with laraji and yet somehow they're all going to be kind of, you know, wandering on and off stage. And then you and Malim will do some duets and then the medicine singers will come out. And so it sounds like we have the outline of a show, but you've already warned me that people are going to be coming and going. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. That's exactly the thing. We're just like kind of facilitating those hangs. I know that we're all going to meet in the, in, 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 we have a little studio in Dumbo and we're all going to meet and hang out and probably we're going to talk a lot about what's going to happen at the show then but then we just kind of show up and you know someone is playing and someone kind of feels the urge to to jump in it's like for me a great part of uh, what's, what's made those kind of like collaborations between traditions of musicians because you know for example I'm less fluent in Gnawa than Mal am I I'm the, I'm the first person to admit that of course you know I kind of play what I play and Hassan plays what he plays and Daryl plays what he plays and we all play together. I think the whole, the nature of improvisation and that spontaneity and that you, that you guys forgive us for, but you know, sometimes like people get a little bit mad at us because people want yeah. details and they want to know what's going on. We <laughs> intentionally want to enter the room and not know what's going on because that's how new things are created and improvisation for us. It's like, that's the language that allows us to play together. That's the language that allows us not to encroach on each other's spaces, for example, because like I would never want medicine singers to change their playing or to not, not or to do anything that they're uncomfortable with based on what I'm doing. So we're just building those zones and kind of like bringing people that that are close to each other and with, with love. And we just create those situations where everybody can come to the picture and, and kind of like be themselves. You know, when I play with medicine singers, I feel like I bring kind of improvisations and I bring my myself and my sensibilities around their music. Well, the important thing and kind of like the backbone of the music is is the medicine singer's music. Sometimes it changes a little bit when Hassan and I play together. Sometimes you just kind of go back and forth between the guitar and his songs. But the fact that improvisation is kind of like at the heart of everything, that's what allows and makes it easier to kind of like break through all those language and tradition barriers because there's something so democratic and kind of beautiful about this concept of improvisation. Everybody just shows up to the room and be themselves. It's also a question of intention, isn't it? That the intention has to be not to, all right, now it's my turn to take a solo. It's the intention is, and you use the word with love, you know, the phrase with love, the fact that you do this because you are genuinely have genuine affection for the people that you're playing with. And, you know, whatever the language or stylistic differences are, there's a personal connection that you all share. A hundred percent, you know, it's just, that's, that's life as a musician, you know, you travel with people, you play shows, those people become your comrades, your, 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 your community, your life, you know, and yeah. I'm very lucky to have musicians like Daryl and Hassan, for example, on this call and everyone else that you mentioned and, and, and more musicians, there's more musicians participating. Sinke Camp is going to play drums. For example, he plays a lot with our projects and if I'm forgetting anyone I'm sorry but there's going to be like a, maybe 10 musicians in this event and they're all like just amazing people and for us like after years of doing it it's just you're going to be making music you're going to be around people you're going to be forming those intimate relationships one thing that I kind of learned from you know some of the masters and the elders that we're playing with some of them are in this call and some of them you mentioned and from like musicians that I love in general is that it really matters to be surrounded by people you love and things like that. That re it, re it really affects the way that the music sounds and more than anything, your life. You just, yeah. the people that you'll be playing with are the people that you'll be talking to on the phone and you'll be like in the, living with them. And yeah. at some point you just realize I, I want, I want it to be people that, that, that I really love. And then like this idea of kind of like of a community where we can go into the studio and record and nobody really cares who's what then, you know, we just kind of like go on adventures together and eventually like figure it out. That's, that, that's the idea behind this community. How, how far can you stretch uh, a tradition? I mean, Daryl, how, 
how far can you and the medicine singers go playing with Jonathan and his crew before you begin to think, yeah, we're kind of getting away from powwow here. And, you know, do you want to get away from powwow at some point? Uh, no, I don't want to get away from powwow. In fact, we're, we're getting ready. We got like, I don't know, three or four we're doing in June. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so it's kind of like in between not playing with Jonathan because, you know, we, we have a responsibility to play for the people too. So, um, I don't want to get away from powwow. I enjoy power and I enjoy pe seeing uh, people out there dancing and, you know, and socializing and gathering together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I have, you know, aspirations. I like a lot of different music, I guess. You could call me a unique person. I have a lot of different loves in in different music. I mean, I, I love jazz, you know what I mean? I like the old time scat that, you know, I, I feel, you know, that's what brought on rap music today was scat. Scat was the, the sounds of the street, you know, for the black community. And, you know, it was good. I mean, scat man, Crothers, people like that. Um, you know, all people that I grew up with watching when I was a kid, because my mother and father were deep into music. They loved music. So I had music when I was in my mother's belly. I had music when I was, you know, when I was growing up and everything. And I mean, not, I, I don't even, I don't even read music, you know, mm. it's just, it's like, it's like a magic within me that just emanates, you know what I mean? And then of course I, um, yeah, as I tell you, I, I, I went back to school um, at 58 years old because I was I'm retiring from my job. I was in law enforcement for the state. And, uh, you know, my military injuries got the best of me. So I went back to school and uh, I took music reading and everything. And I mean, I read a little bit, but they were just amazed, the teachers, that I could go in and formulate these whole beats, you know, with MIDI and stuff and like design a whole you know, the whole piece with no musical knowledge, whatever. You know? <laughs> and, like, and I think that's what happened with, the, with um, you know, with Jonathan is that, you know, I could hear, hear his music matching with us and stuff. And so, I mean, I think I really, I, I really love that match that came together. Um, I did, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Kenny Lyons. He, um, he was a great, great blues guy. He was a one of the uh, one of the chiefs of my tribe, legendary mm. blues player. Um, I'm sure you'll probably look him up after this. Kevin. Yeah, yeah. And um, he was a fantastic guy. And so he he tricked me. I was doing a show one day, and he tricked me because I always liked Muddy Waters. And he called me up in the middle of the show to sing and I was like the curator of the show <laughs> I'm gonna kill you you know and I got up and I did that song long distance call I'm sure you heard that and stuff and like people were like man you gotta you, you know how do you how do you do that you go from native to to blues and everything and I think that you know it's it's just in you you know what I mean it's like uh it's a force and you know the powwow music is a force it's like you know you're you're uh you know i mean top of being a veteran and being you know uh uh you know i'm a consul chief of the tribe you know i'm a warrior deep inside and all that is like it comes out of you and it emanates and so like when i get up on stage and stuff and i'm i'm uh you know playing with jonathan i think the the power of the rock together and everything it like brings out that warrior in me and i'll be screaming jonathan will tell you i you know Sometimes I go crazy. I mean, we, you know, uh, you never know what I, you never know what I'm. I'm one of those people, I'm unexpected. You never know what I'm gonna pull. I mean, I pulled the thing on him last year. We did the Newport Folk Fest. When I go, I got a surprise for you. I brought in one of my war chiefs, and we had a, a warrior standoff in the middle of the Newport Festival with war clubs and everything. Two two warriors battling in full face paint. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I I love doing stuff like that. So, and I think that makes the show even better because people don't know, they have no idea what to expect when they see us. And Jonathan and I are very much alike when it comes to that stuff. It's like, yeah, I, I, got, a, I got an idea. 
I yeah. told you that, that uh, you, you remind sometimes working with you reminds me a little bit of working with monotonics the singer of my old band who was always was, he was kind of like a showman too like you guys are always both like okay so let's start the show by burning half the setting half the venue on fire yeah. you know? and, and that's, that's like you're starting for it you guys really think alike in that regard first of all let's burn the place and then let's let's figure out what yeah, yeah. we're gonna do well, this, just like we did at Greenwood Cemetery I told you he goes what do you want I go get me a torch <laughs> Here I, come out of the, here I come in the dark out of the woods with a torch. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, how did you get the name Black Eagle? Well, Black Eagle uh, is a, Eagle's a watcher over everybody, you know. But because I was a, you know, I was a warrior too, so it was Black Black Eagle. And uh, Clint Wicks and my friend, he said, "Yeah, he says death from above because you're unexpected." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You strike without warning. So that's kind of where I got the name from, you know, and in my okay. my old life and stuff. So yeah, and I've I, I love I love that name, you know, and it's become a it's also like my my trademark now, you know, right. Black Eagle. You know, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna need to repaint that Black Eagle on your drum head though. It's uh it's fading fast. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta put that on. You know, I, I need, I need that. <laughs> People will forget. People will forget. Yeah. It too. <laughs> Was it black eagle or like different color eagle? People will just kind of forget if you don't paint it really quickly. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta redo it. You know, it looks, it looks good. It has the element. Everything has the element. The war paint, everything. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um. Malam, the same question that I asked Daryl a couple of minutes ago for you, how far can you stretch Ganawa music when you're playing with Jonathan and the rest of the, the Stone Tapes gang? How far can you stretch the music? You know, does it still feel like Ganawa music to you when you're playing with electric guitars and drums and other sounds? Yeah, it's just something... Uh... It's different. You have same time is one song to song in Ginawa and to change to Jim and, uh, and Jonathan and, and the guys together is a uh, star and uh, my music and one song is Gambri and something and club everybody. You sing a little bit. Shalaba is a sing in Africa and Morocco and a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Shalaba is one of the songs you recorded with Randy Weston. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, you play and crack up and people to dance and me together and to Jim and Jonathan and people together maybe in four, three songs together. Yeah. Uh, so, John, Jonathan, you're, you're kind of finding a way into Malem's music when you're jamming with yeah. him. You're not dragging him away from what he normally would do. Yes. Yeah, it's an interesting question because I, I don't really look at things exactly like that. I think it's kind of like it's every project is different. It's just like when I play with Daryl, for example, and Medicine Singers, it's it's a vibe, you know, and there's a certain kind of maybe role that I fall into, you know, and there's no real rules. It's more about kind of like serving the music because I feel like we're all just kind of bringing ourselves and kind of bringing something real into the picture. So if what I do is in harmony and it's kind of like attentive to what Ma'alam is doing, I don't think it will. I think being musical would just mean that it's, not pulling it away from from what's beautiful about Knawa music and, and the power of that. But we definitely, we're not precious about it, you know? I feel like in what people call world music, which is a phrase that I often kind of don't really relate to so much because it means a lot, like the kind of demarcation of every music that's not 
American or English and kind of like music yeah. from that tradition, just kind of like marking it in one genre, one kind of bin at the record store. And I think that makes no sense. The same way that in rock and roll, we have those distinctions. People make a distinction between like Italian prog from the 70s and like prog from like France and England. Right. I think that that, that, that same level of nuance exists in Native American music. That same level of nuance exists in Gnawa and Moroccan music in general. We stick it in the world music category and that I think kind of like does the music and the musicians a little bit of a disservice. And I think a lot of times um, there's that, that approach just kind of like limits the music and there's a little bit of like a preciousness there, like, oh, they're doing their sacred music and we're trying not to interfere. We're not afraid to show up and just, you know, be ourselves. C c who else would we be? You know? Right. And as a guitarist, um, I, you know, I am not a guitarist at all on your level, but I know that as someone who's played the guitar my whole life, when I first heard the gimbri or the sintir, they're both names for the yeah. same instrument, yeah. I thought, wow, there's the original bass guitar. You play in uh, an album and uh, bonobo electronic music. Uh, I have some tour with Bonobo and the, the, uh, yeah the electronic music producer Bonobo Las, yeah Las Vegas and uh, and uh, California and uh, in a city where you live in uh, London hmm. nice uh, nice album with him I have some on uh, Grammy community too <laughs> he's a good guy you know? yeah yeah it's just like it's it's just like really great to collaborate you know i think like one thing that kind of like that's surfacing from a lot of the great question that you're asking all evening is that uh, i think the invitation to kind of like because yeah maybe maybe we go a little bit wilder and maybe to places that are not you know currently seen as conventional but uh with our collaboration and stuff like that i just think it comes from a place of just people being themselves and you know and the, I, I think the relationships and the trust between the musicians and the friendship just kind of opens the door to people to show up and maybe like you know like paint in broader brush strokes and just mm -hmm. do whatever every project is different we we're talking about the gambri being the original base we play with hassan for 10 years and we tried so many things and we do so much fun things sometimes hassan picks up a bass and we're just doing like a rock trio with malam playing bass <laughs> sometimes we bring a bass player to play with hassan and there's this interchange between like the bass and the gambri that are different instruments we put sometimes we were the, the gambri is yeah. di sometimes we mic it you know another kind of like um Thing about the world music stuff is also like i feel like a lot of recordings people kind of like show up and they're like oh it's like a powwow drum i'm just gonna stick a sm58 microphone on it like what but the way that we we like to think about it we, we talk a lot with daryl and for example about like how do we want that powwow drum to sound and when we go to the machines with magnets in providence where we made the first medicine singers record or hotel to tango in montreal where we're doing new recordings we try to kind of like mic it in a way that like you know <laughs> it, it, like multi-microphone technique we're really trying to kind of like we're trying to catch Daryl and I talk about it all the time trying to catch the way that the powwow drum feels like when you're playing it or when you're standing next to it and just like really not treat it as like some some sort of like sacred music or like field recordings or something like that just treat it like any other bad music that exists but the source of all this and I think that's something that you're really kind of like showing with your questions and it's really beautiful the open-mindedness of Daryl and Hassan who are masters of their music, which is music that hasn't like over the years so much. We talked about that beautiful Bill Laswell and Pharaoh Sanders Gnawa yes. record, but it, it definitely exists. But I, but the open-mindedness of Hassan, Daryl, that to kind of like bring this, this rich traditional music that they are masters of and take it into new places. It's us that are invited to kind of join their party. And definitely a lot of musicians that are going to be playing on stage are, are improvisers that kind of do it a lot. And here that skill comes in really handy that we can kind of do those things together and be flexible around their music. Well, we, we need to start wrapping up, but we do have a question from one of our attendees. Malam, this is a question for you. What is the yes. Sintir made of? The Sintir, I'm you make handmade to yeah. fix in, to fix in on the cord to fix in Nick Camel. Camel skin? Yes. Mm -hmm. To fix everything, to fix your drum, 
I know fix it, Krakow. Krakow, I have a guy to, to fix it. I need. <laughs> you have a guy that fixes your, yes. <laughs> your percussion. It's, every it's and metal. Stimo, and gambri and drum and yeah. stick for drum to fix this one in Morocco. It's uh -huh. a sense goat. Oh, Shoot. so so it's uh, goat goat guts, goat gut strings, and Shoot. camel skin. Yeah, all right. That's cool. Goat. Yeah, goat. Yeah. Malem had that idea for the cover of the record that we that we're putting out uh, early next year with Malem. Uh, the goat the goat is on the cover, and the name yeah. of the record is Sacrifice. It's really beautiful. Yes. I, I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you some of that music. It's really beautiful. <laughs> well, I I I. I I have learned a lot in the past hour, and the one thing that I think I have sort of taken to heart is that my poor engineering crew is going to be, their heads are going to explode on June 15th, trying to mic all of the musicians, all yeah. of the instruments, as yeah. they come and go off stage at Merkin Hall at the Kaufman Music Center. Uh, with uh, Mama Di Coyote and Laraji and Lee Rinaldo and the Medicine Singers and the three of you, Malam Hassan Ben Jafar, Yonatan Gott, Daryl Black Eagle, Eagle Jameson. I can't wait to see what kind of circus unfolds <laughs> on June 15th. It is the second of our two nights celebrating the 25th anniversary of the New York Guitar Festival. Uh, both nights at Merkin Hall at the Kaufman Music Center. Thank, thank you all for joining us tonight. This has really been great fun. Thank you so much, John. Great thank interview. You. As we say in our language, Akwani, Khan, the Hanashek, not the school with Diem, what he and us. Peace of Sound, <laughs> Sounds good to me, Daryl. All right. <laughs> I'm John Schaefer, and uh, we'll be recording the uh, the music on June 14th and 15th for future broadcast on New Sounds at WNYC.